Signal flow is simply the path an audio signal takes, and while it can vary from setup to setup in how complicated it is, it's important to have an understanding of the basic concept. Every sound has a source and a receiver. The shortest example of this is when two people have a conversation. One person creates sound waves with their voice, and the other person receives the signal through their ears. That path between the waves being created and the eardrum capturing them is the simplest example of signal flow. In a sound system, there are a wide variety of stops in the path, so making sure each is adjusted properly is important. When we use a sound system to amplify a source, we are using devices to augment the signals created by voices, instruments, and as mentioned in the last chapter, pre-recorded playback devices. So what are the stages? Let's look at a voice to keep things simple. A microphone catches sound pressure created by the sound waves from the source. It then travels down the cabling to the audio mixer's preamplifier. At this stage, we can increase the signal coming in from the microphone so we can effectively use the signal. After the mixer stages, we have the power amplifier. This may be integrated into simpler systems or an external piece in more complex systems. This sends our mixed signals to speakers through electrical signal which is converted into sound by the speaker components. Now with all these stages to be considered, it is important that we keep levels balanced as to not overload or overwork one area over another. This is something we refer to as gain structure. When we have proper gain structure, all the pieces of our system are set up to reach their maximum at the same time. This helps us get the clearest signal from each of our sources. Following this train of thought, let's look at the two main areas of control we have. We have our input gain and our output faders. We ideally want to run our output faders at the 0 dB marking. It's at this stage that we are not limiting or boosting the incoming microphone signal. When we limit our incoming signal, we reduce the effective dynamic range, that being the difference between the loudest and the quietest signal point. If we limit our dynamic range, then we will not effectively hear the full range of sound properly. In a phrase, it will always sound loud. If we boost our incoming signal, we run the risk of introducing noise to our signal. So how do we effectively set up a channel for a microphone? Well, there are two main schools of thought on this. The first starts with adjusting the gain so that the input meter reaches zero dB as its first step. This is great in studio work, or if the entire PA has been calibrated to have a matching gain structure, meaning that all inputs reach distortion or their maximum at the same time. However, if the PA has not been calibrated, you won't be able to run the faders to zero dB. This, again, restricts signal flow and our dynamic range, resulting in poor signal flow and sound quality. The second starts with adjusting our channel fader to zero dB and then adding gain as required, making sure that your master output is at zero dB as well as any subgroups that the channel may be routed through. This assures that the signal passes unrestricted through the fader path and onto the master output section, resulting in a much cleaner mix and maximum dynamic range. Following these steps and keeping in mind the path the sound takes before being broadcast into the room via the speakers will help in setting up a microphone or other input channel to have clear, consistent sound.